Hi, my name is Ife Patrick. Ten years ago, I was poisoned. And I did not know who did it. I said I should drink my urine, and I will eat sand. There is one medicine that deals with um, dog feces. With dog shit. Yes, I will drink it. They will take me to some places. I will. They will cut me with razor every morning. I thought maybe I would die. Said because I don't expect. Even the day I did the operation, I thought I would die. So they will started cutting me with razor every morning. Put in some medicine. Things I don't even know. Even hot water, different kind of medicine for my head. <laughs> As in, I started drinking uh, alcohol. I became an alcoholist. I'm very curious. Why were you looking like this ten years ago? What actually happened to you? Actually, it all started. 2012 when i was coming back from school i was having stomach ache so i thought it was menstrual pain or warm like how old were you then i was 13 years old okay so you were like expecting menstrual yes yes so when i get to the ass the pain became severe like but i, I, I still thought it was the pain the menstrual pain though because that is how it uh, taught us in school at school then that we should we expect the pain so, so you were very innocent you thought it was menstrual pain but you didn't know what that it was poison oh no so to my mom my mom went to buy drugs we bought all kind of medicine even some herbs to calm the pain that very day so i slept off that day the next morning pain became severe like so my tummy became strong like I, I, everybody was surprised when my mom she was like what is happening i don't even know so i can't even stretch my back i can't stand well so i was walking like this so my mom took me to like how can you show us how we're walking like like this like buga beauty because of the pain so my mom just quickly she took me to the nearest hospital at um Agbaru. General hospital, so we get there. The doctor checked, and the first the statement he said it was like he said this thing is spiritual that he can't see anything because how the thing was they did a scan or x ray or what? His hands to check or some set like to check, and he said this thing looks spiritual that he don't know what's happening to me. But so he offered to give us treatment for free that very day, so he gave me some medicine to calm the pain, but not to heal it, but just to calm the pain. So from there, we went home. That very day, she took me to one native, um, one lady that used to rob native women. So the lady, like herbalist. Yes. So the lady robbed me and said this thing is poison that she should, as she said, make her, make she carry a picky run or safe not, they go kill her or say this thing is poison. Okay, the herbalist told your mom yes. that she should take you very very far, if not that you'll be killed. Yes. So she, my mom started crying that I know the person I need to know. I'm innocent to all those kind of things. She started asking me questions. Me, I don't know anything. I'm still very young. Like what questions were they asking you? If I did anything wrong or... If you offended anybody? Anybody. If my hands are clean, am I a witch? Do I go to Kovu and all those kind of things? So I'll be like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't do anything. So. so there was like a pressure from your family? Like because everybody was... My family, but my family they know like they know that they trust you yes so all these outsiders like what kind of people extended family extended fam there's relatives neighbors people even the people that they will come for treatment they will say they know the medicine to uh, make me feel okay they will start asking me questions like am i sure if i'm not in wish they will accuse me that i'm a wish like this girl she's in wish she don't want to talk like that's what they used to say so how did you feel all those times they were accusing you I mean, I trust myself. Oh, I say I not do anything, but sometimes I'll be like, I'll be, I'll be wish safe. Maybe I'll be wish I don't know. All those kind of things. I'll be asking my mom. I say, Mommy, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be wish. I'll be, I check. I don't know. Maybe I'll be the wish, but I don't know. See, I'll be wish. So sometimes I'll be like, no, I'm not in wish. All this kind of thing. So we still go to churches. So the pastor will say they just want to destroy my destiny because my very young age at school, I was very brilliant at school. So. It will be like because of my education, they have already seen my star. They want to destroy me, all those kind of things. So I'll be like, all those on squad, they give me hope. Say, okay, this is what's happening to me. So my mom stood by me all those time. Like she never surrender for months. Even when they will carry, I go different places. We get here, we carry. They will carry, I go. The time I say the picking language, she go still come as she go still go talk. Say she go just ask me. Say you sure say if you might be, you sure say you not do anything. I say mommy, I not. She go believe me. She go trust me. Say yes. And 
not do anything. Okay, hey mama, this is your mom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so everything where you're picking the talk now. Not truth. Now now waiting happen. When did it happen? And she's come for school because they let the pain. So they say belay the pain. Can't go buy drugs. So maybe in a mess rapid they come because they never see her once. Can't go buy the drugs for her. See yet. Before overnight, she belay the full belay of strong. So I can't take her to the hospital. So I reach the hospital, the doctor say not see anything. Can't give her drugs, make her go home. So if I know God, make her go serve my God, make her go pray for God. I say, okay. We'll call God. As we go, four days it over, the belay up big. Do they be as they look like they big? I'll call to this speaking run. No church where we will not go. L- like how many churches now? Uh, it reached 20. Oh, TB church and two times. So, okay, we're well, now from Delta State here. Yeah, Ugeli uh, go Lagos. Yeah. The first day they stay for five days. Second time, most two weeks for for Lagos now. TB church. No church where we will not go. What if this church where that my mother die? So, church checkable. Go there. This is uh, a one more church at the start and say for a through. So, no church will not go. From there, we don't go many, many places. Her valleys, we will not go. So, and this speaking of God, I pray at your end. Now, your first or last child? At fourth one. My fourth one. So, now God's job put the way. Now, we scan, we go scan. 19 places, they do the scan, they don't see anything. Come back to you. Thank you. Okay, so tell me, how did this affect your schooling? What what um, class were you at that time? The whole thing started. So I was at actually this whole thing started at uh, from primary school because the pain. Okay, wait. At the age of thirteen, we're still in primary school. Okay, in primary six at thirteen. So I was from that pain. I was having the pain, and the sickness started. So I still managed to go to school. I wrote my primary six exam, entered secondary school. From there, the stomach was growing. So I'm still going to school. Even the they used to laugh and they used to mock at me, but I'm still going to school because I love school a lot that time. So I still go to school then. So, so they used to bully you in school. Some people thought you were pregnant, or Yes, yes. So they'll be like, you know, because of me, some people will be like, don't hear this girl, she's a witch, don't eat her food. Or. Even my close friends will be like, <coughs> they'll start giving me attitude. Like, this in school, what school? Oh, her secondary school. In Ugeli, yeah. Uh, yes, okay, okay. So it'll be like this girl, don't talk to this girl. Even my clothes, the ones that are very close to me, they stop talking to me. So I'll be on my own. But some few ones will still come around. So I managed to I got to SS2. The tummy was very big. Like that one. Okay, as big as this. Yes. So I still go to school. So my uniform was very big. Until one very day I was they've closed from school that so the pain has come. The stomach started paining me. So I was just walking very slow. So my principal just looked at me and said, this girl don't come to the school again because you don't want you to die here. So that day I just felt touch. I went to the ass. What class were you then? SS2. SS2. Okay. I just stay at home. So I just, I stopped going to school. I just stay at home sometimes. So now I'm very curious, how were you able to ascertain that this was poison? How did you come up with the conclusion? Because the whole thing, eh, like... Actually, people also said all those herbalists, even churches, they'll be like this thing is even the first doctor that says they want to carry out this can say this thing is spiritual because we can't find anything. Imagine as big as that tummy, they will not see anything. Go for a scan, they will not see anything. Nothing. Uh, how many scans? Different hospitals, different places, nothing. So like um during the course of trying to get solution to this problem that you don't even know anything about were there certain things that you were asked to do you know certain things that you were asked to do that it will help you it will heal you were there anything like that yes at the very first stage i said i should drink my urine for almost how many months i was morning and evening before i sleep morning and evening you were drinking your urine yes i would drink my urine some give me sand i should put sand i will eat sand there is one medicine that deals with um, dog feces. With dog shit? Yes, I will drink it. They will take me to some places. I will use, they will cut me with razor every morning. Because if I, my mom takes me to anywhere, they will say I will stay the place to I will get well. So they will start cutting me with razor every morning, putting some medicine, things I don't even know, even hot water, different kind of medicine for my head. As in, I started drinking uh, alcohol. I became an alcoholist. 
I used to drink. Okay, how? Okay, Akko, because of the medicine. Yes, medicine. <laughs> Every morning, I would drink maybe TV glass in the morning. I would become high, like. <laughs> no blood again for the mom. Just the mom. Now only cry. My mom go to cry because it's speaking. Ah. Did you ever thought that you were going to ever be this like this? I thought maybe I would die. So because I don't expect. Even the day I did the audition, I thought I would die. I cannot expect this ending so fast. So tell me about the support you got from your family and friends. Like, did people run from you or the people stay with you during those times? Actually, many people, my family, they stood by me no matter what. My sister, my mom, but family people, not no family member, just my fam- my mom and my sisters. That's all. Because my mom lost her marriage because of me, actually. She lost her because they were accusing her that she was the one that did this to me. So that, because uh, they took her to different places, they was they accused me that I'm a witch, but she did not agree. So they just switched it that she's the one that did it. So she just have no other to pack. She just has to leave the marriage for them. <clears throat> so she will move down from that place and move down to this to get it. So that is how everything is. It's very tough then. So, um, how did you get your healing? Okay. After so many years of, I went to different churches. So even at the church, they do mock me. They'll be like, it's on. I but you know they go safe. Now every time for different church, they'll be like, I went to one church, they say, I daughter, the pastor say I'm a wish. I drank blood. They gave me several days. I would die after the seven days. I said, okay. Seven days pass. Not see happen. So I surrendered. I said, I beg, I will not go to church again. I'm tired. I should just stay in the house. Because then I used to stay alone. My family, my sister, they are working. So I would be like, let me just stay in the house. I would be watching TV, Joshua, money service, prayer. Because my period ceased since that time. So I was like, so that one said, I was just watching this Simone TV. I said, okay. If this man is a real man of God and this people do um, testify that the screen they used to touch the screen and miracle will happen i would be like okay if this man is real this thing should happen to me so that very day i just pray and i touch the screen instantly i felt one deep pain and i told me i said ah, i be i won't die one man just say you won't die now so just stand up one man say go sleep for a room you will die for there one say stay pal on me you die for you don't go anywhere so i'll be like one man say i should just call my sister i said so i won't die now okay so i don't see here for me again i don't die I said, okay, me just relax. Instantly, blood started coming out from my body again. So it was black blood. From that day, I started seeing my period. So that one even motivated my mom wait, to wait, wait. Um, wait, wait. I need to, I need to understand what he has seen. You mean that you were watching Emmanuel TV? That Steve Joshua is the synagogue church of all nations. And um, something, you out of faith, you decided to touch the screen that maybe something could happen and then something actually happened black blood was flowing out from your body wow so that was when i start seeing my period again so after after many years of not seeing your period after six years of not seeing my period so after six years of not seeing your period after touching the screen you began to see your period yes. so, two years. okay two years passed by again so something was still like that but i was See my period then so i became i have faith that everything will be okay very soon so there this very day i was just in the house i was in the house they called her that somebody died actually so somebody we know said she died so i was like okay i was in the house my mom just came to me i said you go and do scan so i said i should go and do scan but i've gone to many as i've i've did many scan nothing they, they know it's to say anything so i even told my mom, my mom like i better don't go and they will not see anything, we still go back with the same results. So just relax. So I said, No, I want to go. So she said, Okay, I should go. That she will not follow me. I said, I said, I will go. So okay, but you're able to walk. Yes. But the thing affected my back. It's like as if I have orange back. Because mm. if the pain wants to start at night, if you start from 8 o'clock in the night till since in the morning, I will not sleep. It's very, it has been a very, I don't have a my enemy experience this kind of thing at all because the pain. Eh, even my leg, it affected my leg too because the leg would become stiff. My mom would be using a, she would use her hand to eat it like all slippers because I can't walk. So that day I just said, okay, let me go and do this scan. So I dressed up. I went to uh, the one hospital here, St. Nicholas. That was the hospital I went for the scan. So I got there. So because the doctor know me actually, I do come to the hospital for scan. She would just, the doctor just smile, look at me. I say, say what's a guy? I say, I want to do scan. He said, he said, but I've come here for scan before. And I said, yes. I said, I want to do this one again. He said, okay. So he carried out the scan. He said, he did not see anything. He said, 
He just that he said, okay, I should go to Syria clinic, a sergeant quarters. It's okay. He said, I should go there for this camp. Maybe just tell me so that my mind will just, I'll be okay because I was crying already. He said, I should go to that hospital. I said, okay. So I get back. I told my mom, I said, I'll not tell you before. I'm not telling you, you know, go to scan. They go tell you, say, I don't say anything. So I said, but I'm going back the next day. That was so I said, I'll go and look for that hospital. So that very night, we will not sleep. I and my mom, we pray that night. I collected my TV shower, calm water. It's the empty one though. So I put water inside. I add salt to it. I used to pray that night. I said, God, you are the one telling me to go and do scan. I don't know. So why are they not seeing this thing? I said, she just revealed everything to me. So I slept off that night. So the next morning, I quickly wake up. And I went to look for that hospital. So we get to the hospital. Ah, one of my uncle, like one of my brothers, like that. So we get to the hospital. We do not even spend time. We just pay for the scan, four thousand naira, and they ask me to go and see the doctor. The doctor do the scan. It's not up to. It's not up to twenty minutes safe. It's just detects what is in the tummy. And uh, it was like okay, detected something in the tummy. Say there is something there. So but I'm nothing has been there before now. Oh, All of a sudden. Yes. It's just. Uh, I'm trying not to be superstitious here, but you mentioned that somebody died, and after that, after you heard that that person died, there was this strong conviction in you go for test, go for test, go. But you've been going for test all this, so I've been going for scan, but nothing. Then now you say, Oh, let me go, and then the doctor finally found something. So he asked me, like, Where have I been since? Like, this thing, I told him everything that happened. He said, Jesus. It was like he was even surprised. He said, Am I sure? I said, Yes. He said, Okay, because the doctor that directed me to that place gave me one note to give to the doctor. So he quickly drew something inside. I had to carry out the operation. He said, I should go back to that first hospital. That that man is the only man that can do this operation for me. He said, Because if they should put me out of this country, they will not be able to. He said, I should go and meet that doctor, which is Nicholas. He said, I should go and meet that doctor. He's the only doctor that can do this operation. So I said, Okay. So I quickly rushed back. I called my mom. So we went to the hospital that very day. We get there. I gave the man the, the doctor the book. He was shocked. He was surprised. He said, Am I sure if the doctor gave this me this scan result? I said yes. So he stayed at me for some minutes before he would say anything. Like it's the only thing that was because he's a pastor too. So he said, Jesus. He said, Am I sure if this thing is the doctor that gave me this book? I said yes. Ha. He said, Okay. He said, No big deal. He just said we should pay, we we'll bring him two fifty for the operation. Two hundred and fifty thousand mm, naira for the operation. Bring uh, two pounds of blood. Say before the operation, we deposit eighty thousand at that first. He said, Anytime we are ready, say, But they advised us to do it that week. So we said, Okay, my mom, she's scared already. Ha. Ah. She said, No, she said, I'm not going to do operation. She said, I will just die. <laughs> she said, I don't want to start to cut this belly. Where they want to start from? So she was scared. The doctor said, No, say we should do the operation. How old were you at the, this time now? Nine. At the time that you went for the operation. 19 18 years sorry okay 18 we're going to 19 18 to 19. <laughs> so my mom said okay we agreed so when we get to the house ha we must sleep oh it's prayer even for nights as i won't sleep just so there we went to just with that on saturday no on thursday on thursday the operation was on saturday he booked us on saturday for the operation so that's on thursday we'll get home started praying fasting and prayer actually i do fast that period of time on wednesday i do fast wednesday and friday so that day my mom was just so we started playing gospel song praying fasting that thursday friday only two days we have only my just in one day so my mom would took me to one church she got the church she doing events for prayer so we should go out and the pastor should pray for me so that i will come back with the testimony so we went to the church we waited for the pastor nothing but ah she said, let's go home so we get to the house that night, which is on Saturday, the next day is Saturday. We are, we are getting ready for the operation already. So we started packing our things. So even at night, I want to sleep. She just, I'm not sleeping though. She just peep to my, she just come to my, she want to peep. She just be looking at me. Or, Why? I don't know. Maybe she's thinking about something like, if I want to lose this child, maybe this picking now, she go come go, she no go come back. This picking one day. Even myself, I did come and I want to say this, I'll call go now. And I will call for my mom come back, all those kind of things. My junior was there, they asked. So they call the answer to see where we won't go. I say we won't go to church because the doctor said we should not tell anybody. But even my sisters, they no no. So but we told them that I want to do a picture, but I said the next month. That's what we said. So she would just be staring at me. I will just I mean at the people too. She the people me at the people. So I'll be like <laughs> So Oh man not true. Not true. <laughs> so she the people me ah my last one for answer see where would they go? I said would they go to church too? 
I caught him. I said, "We go crusade." I call like I say, "If I not come back, maybe I pass the travel." I would say, "I caught him." I say, "If I not come back, I will pass the travel." Say, "Okay." So we just tell our neighbor to look after my young girls. So that day we get ready for the operation, get to the hospital. Even when we go for road motor course, because I'm the first person they book for operation that day. So motor course was prepared for road. My mom said we we'll go carry the load for a trek, go to the hospital. So the coffee is the motor for we we'll reach the hospital. Damn. We don't even reach. Don't even wait. Make her pray first. My mom says straight to the theater. Ah, my mind's all caught. My mom, don't. Hey God, see how special it is there. I just as I enter the theater, I just get one mind. I just cross my mind. I say I beg. I try. Even if I die safe, I try. I don't tire. Make I just do them. I go rest because the pain and everything is too much. So I just made up my mind. So they just dress me for the operation. So they gave me this uh, drawers. They used to that essential for <coughs> so they will sleep up before they operate you. It not work. So I was I, I, I was awake till the operation finished. The operation was I mean, it's almost. Wait, wait, you were awake while they were operating. You. Yes. So almost till we are. What did you feel pain? Yes, and I feel the pain. I was even shouting. My mom used to hear outside. My mom, <laughs> she started crying. Wait, wait, you were awake. Yes. You were feeling pain as they were cutting your body. Yes. So the doctor, so the doctor said that maybe if I slept off, I will not wake up again. So that's what he said. Same thing. So thank God I didn't know what. So I was. At least they gave you drugs to minimize the pain. <laughs> they gave me drugs, but nothing seems to work. So I was just. Huh. And you were just 19. Yes. So I was the only thing I can do is just to shake my head like this. I don't say I should shame you to press my head. To the ah. My mom was crying outside. I would just shout. If I stop shouting, she'd say my kid will die. Because she's too close to the theater. She'd be like, I used to yell. She'd be like, my kid will die. My kid will die. So she was shouting. So luckily, yeah, after tearing the stomach, that thing that was in that bucket, there was water inside, like 20 liters of water inside. It's more than 20 because some pour on the uh, theater ground, like on the floor. So they're fixing pipe to so bring out the water before they can carry out that thing. So before they carry out that thing, they just they suck out those water first and bring it out. You are still awake. Yeah, still awake. So they used to bring it before they bring it out. The doctor herself was very weak after the operation. He could not even stitch. He just he said he did not do the stitching. Then he quickly rushed outside because the place, as in they all put the theater down so anybody can enter because the senior, he said he has never done anything like that in his life. Okay, that was the first time he was operating that, yeah, that particular operation so it was like the thing was as in air he was very shocked so he rushed aside they stitched me i was awake cool oh, finished the stitching so i started feeling cold they brought me to cold from the theater to the main ward just like this they just so they brought me and said my mom saw me ah she started calling people so they sent me to the bed started calling people this girl Every year was filled up. Even the people that said I'm a winch self, they just came to see if this thing is true. Like they really have operated, operated this gay. This thing is they can, as in any doctor can do this thing. So the, everybody, I call my sisters, everybody. So after the operation, the doctor said that um, because he was when he was operating me, I heard him saying something like, he said hey, this girl will not be able to see her period again because of one thing. I don't know what he removed or I don't know. But I heard him saying it like, or maybe if she wants to see her period. It's only by God's grace. Maybe after six years or seven years ahead. So, he said before I was my <coughs> my period again. So my own down did not concern me. So far I did okay. Not because I'm concerned period. So I went to the ward, stayed there. How many months stay? Not stay up to two months in the hospital. So he said before I will work again. It will be up to three to four months because the operation was very. It affected my vein. My, so it was very, very severe. So that's, you know, one month after the operation, my mom went to watch, she went to watch some plates outside. So one might say I should stand up. I should just try my best. So I, I just try, I walked down to my, because I'm in private ward. So I walked down to, so a lady saw me. So I quickly rushed back to the bed. So the lady told my mom that I saw your daughter. Oh. So my mom was, has in, my mom said, not be my picky, you see. God forbid, my picky, there's something for she will Now, three we must die. Now you see just now. Because they argue with the woman, it's not my picking. So my mom came in, my mom just asked me, say, ah, one woman said she see you when you walk. I say yes, I can want me to say no lie. So I stand up and I try my best. Ah, quickly. Oh yeah, the hospital, the nurses all they appear, oh, they are see this girl, quick recover. Oh, ah. The doctor just came down. The doctor looked at me and say, ah, for this thing where this picking just so he said we are not paying any money again. Just the eighty thousand we deposited that time. Instead of paying two hundred and fifty thousand, the doctor changed his mind. Uh, 
and say because I'm not sure, say we should not pay any money again. So he say from that day, my name is testimony. He say I should not, I should answer testimony from that day. He say that his name is, is going to call me from today. So I say okay. So after everything, after the hospital, we discharge to our house. So the next month after my operation and everything, my medicine starts. And the doctor said yes. that you are not likely to expect your period yes. until six years time. Yes. So my period starts. My mom asked me to go back to the. They took me back to the hospital to tell the doctor that this is what happened. Ah. The doctor was shocked. He said, "What time I want to talk again?" Say because this one, I don't believe I say I carry the talk. My world not quite the come to say. Ain't no good for talking anything pretty sensitive for my body. He said because this one, I don't pass. Be careful. He said this one is. He said my name. He said Admiral Kojo in the name. He said because this thing that is now you can't even say anything. So that's how everything. Happened and ended. Wow, 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 wow. This is serious, you know. When you talked about how you were operated while still awake and feeling all of those pains, man, I was just like, God, how did you even survive that? Because somebody's awake, you are cutting the person's tummy, you are taking a lot of things out, and you are just there feeling the pain. That must have been hell for you. So, uh, you mentioned something about um, some pastors, or was it herbalist? They asked you to eat dog shit. Yes, I used to do some medicine, different kind. Even frog. You ate frog? Yes, now. Nah. Lizards they used to do medicine for me. So, what, I want to know about, the, like, what did you... Let's talk about the sacrifice, the things that you had to do just so you'll be back to your normal self. Hmm. A lot of things so ah there's one that ah, this one they gave to me then bread and canny roasted canny one uh, celestial woman <laughs> she kept my mom that say she has a solution to the problem so she brought a gallon of uh, water for a uh, four liter from river she put bread inside the water and the roasted canny he caught the bread into 24 he bring the canny i was even taking it to school roasted canny every one one hour i would eat it Every one hour, I wait it every one hour. So I was looking at my time. If I want to, at night I not sleep. Oh, I will just my mom will just wake me. Oh yeah, eat the candy and bread. I wait. I will just sleep out. Eat the candy and bread. I will just wake up. Hey, that one. Eh? Yeah. So different, different people. Even this, the one the sand when I, I will just be eating sand. But, but, like you eat dog feces, you eat frog, yeah, lizard. Do medicine so many ashes this ashes on fire they put it inside can put a gogoro inside i will drink different things many leaves i don't even know their names eh? so they would that time they used to cut me with razor every morning cut on my body see blood gushing out we spray some things inside different places ah, different things like right we thank god for life so let's talk about your life presently so how long did it take you to recover? Oh, are you still recovering? Actually, so actually, my daughter said I should go and give birth. <laughs> That's the only thing that is. Say I should go and give birth. I want you to give birth anytime soon. So I'll be like, I want to get something doing first because I cannot go to school. So where did you stop? Um, the SS2. So actually, SS2. The time, my stepdad was the one assisting me. So, but it's late now. So he was the one who stood by me then. It's all right. So, so we lost him everything changed he never said to enjoy what he labored for so for now so do you have hope to still go back to school yes yes are you working towards it actually i would have written exam this year but it's very late it's late already so i could not so you're hoping to you 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 are going to get jam form what would you like to study in school me actually i do like mass common but i don't know i like mass common. you are still you are going to consider it so right now I'm still I'm just working. I'm into makeup. You learnt it for how long? It's not up for one year. Oh. So I do makeup and actually what I want to do is like I love I don't want to be a self boss like only in a makeup store and at the same time as in a photography inside. You know that kind of thing. After makeup you will do the photo coverage and everything. That is what I love editing. So yeah, you're interested in photography. Yes, photography and that makeup stuff. So so you are currently learning photography? No, um, I learned makeup, then I switched to photography. So I will go back to makeup to upgrade my hand again. So I stopped the photography because I do not have camera and laptop for my editing. So I'm just using my phone. 
if I use my phone to snap, I will use my phone to edit for now. Okay, so if you have a camera, if you have a laptop, you you'll be very happy. Yes, I will be very happy because okay. I will be doing my editing stuff and snapping on this kind of. Thing. Okay, at least with that you should be able to. But even now, people do call me like I should go and rest camera to come and snap them. Okay, I'll okay. Be like, can you show me some of your work, some of the things you like, pictures you've taken? You have any? Then it's not this phone I'm using, so I lost my phone then. Okay, so. But people are giving, you are getting jobs anyway. Yes, yes. Okay, what about the people that that got scared because of what happened to you? How are they reacting? Like, seeing you. I don't like keeping enmity, so everybody's my friend. Even those ones that have did me wrong, that gossip me, that have ask people not to talk to me. As far as my eyes are clean, I'm not doing anything, so I'm not putting anybody in my mind like this person. So everyone is your friend, yeah. regardless of what they did, what they said about You cannot pray for anybody to experience that thing. Aha. No, nobody should experience that thing. That pain is too much. Now, how did this poison of a thing, how did it happen? As in like, was it true food? How? There are many, as in we don't know, some people say true food, some people say it's my measure pad. Some people say I match this. Some people say it's my f- I urine. They pack my urine. So the thing is just summer, like. But it's poison. Yes. Or you just don't know. I, you probably at 13 you were just like an innocent girl. So even if it was food, you wouldn't even know. If it was something somebody did to you while you were playing, you wouldn't still know because you were innocent. Because mm. that time, eh, <laughs> sitting there like this now, they will come oppressing, like all those spiritual attack. Okay, sleeping paralysis. Hey, they will just come every every afternoon, night or afternoon, morning. Or. Can't can't do anything. Just God. Oh. Can't even sit down like this. If I was there, they will put foam inside the chair in my bum bum because there's nothing. Okay, can you stand? Cause um, I think you're a very tall person. So let's look at you. Okay, so <laughs> she's very very tall. Come, let's walk out. So how are you how are you bouncing back to life? How is, li- how is life treating? Let's go. Life is fair, I would say, because my family, they are still there. They still love me. I still love them. Even though I'm doing wrong, they will be like, hey, so funny. But one thing I used to do, I used to copy things. <laughs> I used to make calls, like, I know I hate making calls. You don't like then speaking on the phone? Because mm-hmm. then I not, I have, I don't make calls. I stay, I stay alone. Even when I contacted you, you told me that you don't make, you don't accept calls, except. Yeah, I don't message with that, so. so life is just there. But I hope you are not finding it difficult to make friends. No, no. Okay. So if I want to work, I would like to raise my shares. They will be like, you don't born before. If, so okay, let's see your talk if I can't, okay, so if I can't explain. That's the mark.